Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome to PTPOG, Practicing the Presence of God. Pastor Michael Hayes back with you on this incredibly gloomy, seemingly anyway, Sunday morning here in beautiful downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I am Pastor Michael Hayes, pastor of the Hillcrest Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Pittsburgh. Glad to have you back with us this morning. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, good morning. And good morning, everyone. Listen, it is, what is it, December the 13th? So we are right towards the middle of the month. We are getting very close, We're getting very close, very, very close to a very incredibly special day for a lot of people. <laughs> Uh, and that is the end of the year, but also, of course, uh, we have Christmas coming up very soon, which is usually on uh, December 25th. Um, I don't know what we're going to do for Christmas this year. It looks like we're just going to be here. Uh, we're pretty much on lockdown here in Pennsylvania. I don't know about you guys and what's going on with you. Our governor actually caught COVID. But my understanding is that the last two tests that he took showed negative. So I don't know. I mean, this is just a crazy world that we are in. Uh, and so right now, everything is kind of on lockdown. Even businesses have been completely shut down. And, uh, you know, I just really wish <laughs> that all of this would have been avoided. But unfortunately, we are in the mess that we are in. So we've got to get some paddles and just paddle through this thing. But anyway, I digress. Let me get to our word for this morning. It is found in the book of Proverbs, chapter 28. And we're looking at verse number four today. Proverbs, chapter 28, verse number four. Uh, I've only got three texts for you this morning, and then I'm going to let you go. But our first text is found in Proverbs 28 and verse number four. Here's what the word of God says. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. <clears throat> they that forsake the law praise the wicked, but they that keep the law contend with them with them. Today, uh, this is a, <laughs> a brief subject. We're going to look briefly at this passage here, and we're going to look at uh, the subject of watch who you're praising. Watch who you're praising. Let, let, let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy, and so much for your loving kindness. What a blessing has been already throughout the, we're in the middle of the weekend, uh, and uh, Lord, it's just been a blessing. Yesterday was a blessing, and we ask, Lord, that you be with us today. Uh, give us, uh, Lord, this day, our daily bread this morning. We need you, and we desire for you to disseminate truth to us. So please, bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. By the way, I talked yesterday at our Sabbath service about being blessed and what, uh, why it is that God blesses us and what uh, we must do in order to be able to stand being blessed, in order to be able to, uh, you know, be prepared for the blessings that God has for us. You might want to check that out. It should be on our Facebook page. But uh, anyway, we're looking at this text this morning and Solomon tells us, Solomon tells us that uh, those who
forsake the law, that is, those who don't keep the law, those who don't follow the law of God, those who don't follow the will of God, actually wind up praising somebody. Now, basically what he's telling us is that our lives are for the purpose of glorifying somebody or praising somebody or giving somebody a pat on the back, a praise on the back. This is what our lives do. Whether you know it or not, whether you realize it or not, you are praising somebody with your life. You are uh, backing somebody up. You are confirming somebody with your life. You're either going to confirm the wicked or you're going to confirm God and his will and his word. When we don't follow the will of God, when we don't follow the law of God, when we expunge the law of God out of our lives, we are essentially praising evildoers. We're backing them up. It's as if we're in the bleachers, right? And we're watching these evildoers do all the evil that they do. And we're raising and lifting up hands and slapping five and praising them as they do it. That is what it is like when we, when we go against the law of God. The law of God is powerful. The law of God is righteous. It is holy. It is a transcript, we are told, of God's character. The law of God is made up of 10 rules, if you will, or 10 precepts, I would say. I wouldn't call them rules. 10 precepts that identify us to us who God is. The first four are reflective of our relationship with God. The last six out of the 10 commandments, which is found in Exodus chapter 20, the last six deal with our relationships with one another. Now, here's the interesting thing that I've always said this about God. God, is, you know, when, when he shares something with us, it, he's not complicated. He's not complicated. You know, he's not all deep and super, you know, <laughs> aristocratic in the way that he shares with us, whatever it is that he's trying to share with us. So when God decided to give his people the law or the way that he would have them to live their lives. He didn't give them a million rules, he, you know, like men do. There's a whole lot of rules that men come up with. Have you ever noticed that? It's so many, it's bylaws and laws on top of laws and then precepts behind that. And then there's other laws that back up those laws. And then there's some books that, that disseminate what those laws mean and all this kind of, well, God, it's just 10, 10 simple <laughs> basic precepts. That's all, it's just 10. And we can't even deal with them. It's amazing how we come up with all these other laws that we think we're gonna keep, laws of men, and we can't even keep the 10 that God gives us. And they're so simple, they're so basic. It's not, you know, they are deep, but I mean, if any a child can understand these things. A child can understand these laws. Don't steal. Don't rob from your neighbor. Don't commit adultery. Huh? Honor your mother and your father and those who are uh, in charge over you, who take responsibility for you. Honor them for their willingness to take responsibility for you. I mean, it's very simple. This stuff is very simple. Don't covet. Don't covet what somebody else has. Don't sit over there looking at and, mm, boy, I wish I had. Oh, man, if I only had that, I'd be fine. I'd be satisfied if I had what she had. Don't do that. That's, that's what God says. Don't do that. It's going to lead to that kind of the destructive behaviors. And when we follow the law of God, we are praising him. We're showing forth his goodness, his mercies, his blessings, his power. We're showing forth his truth. But when we break these laws, when we ignore them, when we, the text says, forsake them. And, you know, it's one thing to just miscalculate or make a mistake or 
fall at one point or another or trip and fall, you know, but it's another thing to just, I'm just going to forsake this. I'm just not going to do it. That's what he's talking about. That's what the uh, Solomon is talking about. Them that just completely forsake, just completely leave the law in the dust. You are praising others who are breaking the laws, who are doing evil in the sight of God. So God calls us, watch this, to not only be hearers of the word, but, and not only be speakers of the word, but to be doers of the word. Notice with me in Matthew chapter five, Matthew chapter five, verses 13 through 16. Matthew chapter five, verses 13 through 16 tells us what it is that God has purposed in our lives for all of us, no matter who we are. This is our vocation. This is who we are as a people who believe in the true and living God. This is who God has designed and called us to be. Notice with me, Matthew chapter five, verses 13 through 16. Here's what the word of God says. The word of God declares that you are the salt for the earth. But if the salt loses its taste, how will it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled upon by people. Guess what? You are the light of the world, verse 14. You are a city that cannot be hidden when it is located on a hill. And no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, everyone who lights a lamp puts it on a lamp stand. Then its light shines on everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine in the front of people. Then they will see the good that you do and they will praise, watch this, they will praise your father in heaven. Isn't this a blessing? Now watch this. Here's what God is saying. God is saying, listen, instead of going around protesting the things that people are doing wrong, instead of going around jumping in front of abortion clinics and protesting and putting up signs and saying, it's wrong for you to do this, it's wrong. Instead of doing all that kind of stuff, why don't you just live the life? Why don't you just live the life? Why, why, don't, why don't you do that? That's what God is saying. Just, just live the life. You don't even have to open up your mouth for 95% of the time until somebody asks you a question. Listen, what is the reason for the passion in your life? What's going on? Then you respond with something. But you don't have to go around preaching to people. You don't have to go around putting up neon signs, telling people all the stuff they're doing wrong and protesting folk and all. You don't have to do that. Just live the life. If you would just live the life, God says, just live the life. If you would just walk in the ways of the Lord in your own life, mm, mm, instead of trying to get everybody else to do it, why don't you do it? Why don't you get yourself to do it? This is what God is saying. This is what God is saying. He says, you are the salt of the earth. Salt is the one that preserves. That's what a salt is. That's what salt is. Salt is used, or at least at that time it was, it was used for as a preservative. And it also, obviously, it influences whatever it is that it is packed on, whether it's meat or whether it's uh, vegetables or whatever food it's packed in. Salt has a way of preserving things and has a way of influencing things, seasoning things. That's what you are. See, salt is invisible, though, the way that it influences the you know, when you put that salt in the water to kind of season the water when you're going to put your pasta in, you know what I mean? The salt does what? It just disappears. You can't even see it. You don't even know it's there until you taste the pasta and you realize it's actually inside the pot. It's influenced the pasta, see? See, that's what you are. You're, you're like salt, see? You're like salt. You preserve the word of God 
and you also, amen, influence others for the things of God. Mm, just by living the life, just by living the life. You don't have to go around, like I say, with neon signs and laser light shows. And you don't have to do that. Just live the life before people. And people will notice and they will see your good works. And then it says, you're like a light on a mountain. God says, when I, listen, when, when I call you, when I change and transform your life, I'm going to put you, I'm going to put you in a position of a lampstand where you're going to be the light in the midst of darkness. See, th listen, listen, there are no secret agent Christians. Are y'all listening to me today? There, there's no such thing as a secret agent Christian who's undercover. <laughs> I don't want nobody to know, you know, that I'm a Christian. No, th there's no such a thing. That that is not that's not in the Word of God anywhere. Nobody is called to be a secret agent Christian believer follower of Christ. That is ridiculous. God is going to put you in front of people so that people can see how somebody who believes in the true and living God lives. See, that, that, that's the purpose, that's the point. And that's why it's incumbent upon us then to follow the word of God. Because if God, watch this, if God puts you on a light post, if God puts you on a hill <laughs> as a lamp, as a light, on a hill and you are doing everything that everybody else is doing, who are you praising? Let's see, who are you praising? Who are we praising? That's the question this morning. Who are we praising with our lifestyle? Who are we praising with our lifelong decision-making? Who are we praising with the choices that we make on a daily basis? Who are we praising? Are we praising the wicked? The evil, are we praising the enemy of God or are we praising God and his word and his will and his way in our lives? It's very simple. It's very basic, but it seems like it's such a hard thing for us to do. This is why we have to depend and call upon the name of the Lord on a daily basis because we oftentimes have to be reminded of who we are and whose we are and what our purpose is and what it is that God is doing through us. Cause oftentimes we think nobody's watching us. We, we think that, well, you know, nobody cares about my life. Nobody's watching me. Listen, the very time and point in time when you think nobody's watching you, that's when everybody's watching you. Everybody's watching you. Everybody's watching you. I, I tell this story all the time and it makes the point. Um, you know, years ago, when I first started pastoring back in Jackson, Tennessee, <clears throat> um, you know, I wanted to go see uh, LeBron James play. Uh, and so I was in Jackson, Tennessee, and it takes about 70 miles uh, outside of uh, east of uh, Memphis. And so the Memphis Grizzlies were playing the Cleveland Cavaliers. And so I took a trip and went to the game with my wife and uh, a friend of mine had got me really, really good seats. I didn't even realize how good the seats were. I mean, I was literally on the floor. I couldn't believe it. I was right there. <clears throat> and uh, I'll never forget, it. it was the first time I saw LeBron James. I think it was his second year. It was his first or second year, I think, in, in the league. And I'll never forget how I was like, that's the most chiseled dude I ever seen in my life. That dude is ridiculously, oh my goodness. He like a, <laughs> I mean, he was big, tall, but just grizzled. Like somebody chiseled him out of granite or something. You could just tell, he was head and shoulders above everybody else on the floor. You could just see it. And it was only like his second year in the league. You could just see, I was like, man, this dude just got out of high school. This is crazy. But anyway, so uh, I'll never forget, man. They were playing ball and and everything, and uh, I remember coming back that next week. I think it was like a Sunday or something, 
And uh, so the next week at church, somebody had showed me, uh, I'm sorry, no, it was like a Tuesday night or Wednesday night or something. Yeah, because I, we, we had a prayer meeting like the next day and somebody had brought or showed me the newspaper from Memphis and on the front page of the sports page, my picture was right there. <laughs> Evidently, a reporter had taken a picture of me at the game. I didn't even know it. And I was on the front page of the newspaper, <laughs> of the sports section in the newspaper about the basketball game. I didn't even know it. I had no idea this guy was focused on me with his camera. I had none, no idea. And this is my point. My point is people are watching you and you don't even realize it. This guy took a picture of me. He didn't even come, come tell me, he took a picture of me, put me right in the newspaper, commercial appeal right there in Memphis, Tennessee. Like what, what? <laughs> people are watching you. People are taking snapshots, photos, of your life and they're examining them. They're checking them out. They're seeing, does his photo line up with his speech, with his talk, with his, with his testimony? See, that's what's going on. Who are you praising with your life? Who are you praising with your life? I'm gonna give you one text left and I'm gonna let you go this morning. First Peter chapter two and verse number 12. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 12 says this, keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you, even as they speak against evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that he visits them. I see. Keep your walk your conversation, when it says conversation, it's talking about your daily life, your daily walk, your daily decision-making. That's what the, you know, the, I don't know why they say that uh, in terms of the translation, but conversation in this particular context, keep your conduct, your conversation, your conduct among the Gentiles as honorable. In other words, remember whose you are. Remember whose you are as you operate and go about, the, about your daily life, as you go to the grocery store today and someone is slow in line and it's taking all day and you're frustrated because you're trying to get out of the grocery store because you're tired of wearing this mask and you don't want to catch COVID and you get a little perturbed about this person taking all day. Live honorably before those who don't know the Lord. Amen. So that, so that, when the time of visitation comes, when Christ comes again, they will speak praises of you and your life and the way that you treated one another. You know, that's what it's really all about. It's how we treat each other. <clears throat> that, that, that's what it's all about. It's how we treat the things of God, but also how we treat one another. How you treat one another, how you relate to other people is the most, in, it, it's the most indicative factor of whether or not the spirit of God lives in you. Are you patient with other people? Are you kind to other people? Are you forgiving of other people? Do you give other people a second, third, fourth, fifth, 20th, 250th chance like God does with you? Hmm. Are you patient with people? Are you caring for people? Are you concerned with others? Do you pray for other people? Even those that you don't even know. Even those who are your enemies. Do you pray for your so-called enemies? Jesus did. You see, this is what real faith is all about. Who are you praising with your life today? I pray that it's God. Amen. 
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your blessings and your goodness today. Continue to empower us, Lord, to live for you and allow us, Lord, to continue to focus on walking your way, your will, in the way that you've designed for us. Help us, Lord, to uplift your law before the people of God and before those who don't even know you today. For, Lord, we need desperately to know the truth so that the truth can set us free. Oh, how desperate this world is for the truth, God. Let us live that truth out on a daily basis. Let us be the salt of the earth. Let us be that preservation power, Lord, that preserves your law, your will, your way. And then, Lord, let us be that incredible light on a hill that shines brightly that others might see the way out of the darkness. Thank you for your grace and mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, God be with you and God bless you. I pray this has been a blessing to you. If it has, please like it and share it on your Facebook page. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our Facebook channel, uh, our Facebook group, I should say. Just type inside of your search engine, hashtag PTPOG, practicing the presence of God. It will pull up a purple icon, much like the one you see in the background behind me. Click on it and join our ministry family. Love to have you be a part. Also, if you're watching this happenstance by way of our YouTube channel, which is rather new, I appreciate you stopping by. Leave a comment down below if you would. I'd love to hear from you. We really appreciate the comments that are left. And also, if you would consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We need as many members as we can get. God be with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Have an awesome Sunday. We'll see you on tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 Central, 6.30 Mountain, 5.30 Pacific. This is Pastor Michael Hayes signing off from Pittsburgh, PA. Have a great and awesome day. Take care, guys. Love you.